From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Our top story, a North Pole man has been taken back into custody on court orders after a judge says more evidence in his case has come to light. Alan Hughes is charged with 27 counts of sexual abuse of a minor. Earlier this week, Hughes, who was under the watch of a court-approved third-party custodian, was arrested and is being held on $250,000 bail. He's accused of sexually abusing three minors and forcing them to have sex with a juvenile male. Today's Superior Court Judge Jane Kavar said Hughes had been out on unreasonably low bail for the accusations and number of charges that he faces. But it is new information to the case at this point that the child has now recently given statements that would corroborate the other victim's versions of what happened. Courts, by arresting him without even calling him in, has I think it's a violation of his due process rights to be heard. Um, the court is considering apparently new evidence and considering other things without giving him an opportunity to, uh, to address that. Hughes has pleaded not guilty to the charges and is scheduled to go to trial in August. A Fairbanks man who was part of an armed robbery and home invasion last year pleaded guilty this afternoon to lesser charges as part of a deal with the state. 21-year-old Michael Jamar Reynolds pleaded guilty to a single count of second-degree robbery. That is reduced from armed robbery in the first degree and felony theft. Court documents say Reynolds and two other men forced their way into a Marianne Street residence with guns and robbed a female victim and other occupants of thousands of dollars and an iPhone 6. Witnesses said the men wore bandanas to cover their faces and pointed their guns at all the occupants of the home. Police were able to find the stolen iPhone at Reynolds' apartment. However, he claimed he was only the getaway driver. Reynolds' sentencing was left open to the court. A Fairbanks man indicted on two counts of first-degree sexual assault pleaded not guilty to the charges yesterday in Fairbanks Superior Court. 18-year-old Timothy Roselli was charged of having sexual contact with a female without her consent in 2013. He's being held at the Fairbanks Correctional Center on $50,000 bail. Trial for his case is set for September. Green Star of Interior Alaska is no longer providing recycling services for the Tanana Valley State Fair. Executive Director Becca Bredo says Green Star will not recycle for the fair this year because of a lack of sponsorship funding. Instead, they will provide recycling services to Golden Wheel Amusement's Summer Spectacular Carnival. The Fair Association says it will be providing recycling services of their own. Bredo says they asked the State Fair Association for $1,000 to provide recycling this year, but were instead offered a free booth and tickets for volunteers, which they turned down. It's an offer that Fair General Manager Joyce Whitehorn says was more than adequate. I thought it had all been settled, that, you know, when they told us they weren't going to come, we moved forward with, just like we always do with everything else, and we hate not to have them here, we really do, but we cannot give them what they thought they needed for this fair, mm -hmm. and that's just the basis of it. This was a decision that was carefully thought out and discussed among our board of directors, and we came to the realization that it can only truly be a partnership if both sides are contributing. and. What we felt was the fair was willing to tolerate us, but they weren't particularly interested in having us there. Fire officials are reporting little growth from Alaska wildfires today because of cooler temperatures and rain in several areas. Acres burned in the state remain at 4.7 million, the same number recorded yesterday. The Aggie Creek Fire, 30 miles north of Fairbanks, had minimal growth because of rain in the interior. Crews managed to get the blaze up to 42% contained. The rain also minimized growth for the Baker and Hay Slough fires in the interior. The Tetlin Hills fire near Toke also received rain. Alaska Interagency Public Information Officer Dave Schmidt says people should not expect the recent rains to be constant. We keep getting cycles of moist weather coming in with a period of drying and another period of moist weather, another period of drying kind of off and on. And that will continue for the next few weeks uh, expectation so we'll just have to wait and see like I say the rain is not a season ending event by any stretch so if we do get some dry weather the fires will kick up and grow and when we come back thousands of military both active and reserve just completed a major exercise last month in the interior we'll tell you how everything went also Pioneer Park is getting ready for Golden Days activities in two weeks you'll get an update during our what's happening at Pioneer Park segment those stories and more when we return
And welcome back. The multi-force Northern Edge exercise wrapped up in Alaska last month. Monty Bowen has details in this week's health military report. Northern Edge 2015 is Alaska's premier joint training exercise. Thousands of airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen from active duty, reserve, and National Guard units are involved. The exercise in Alaska saw over 200 aircraft from every service branch taking part. Nearly every one of them launched every day during the exercise with a full fuel tank. We fuel every single plane on this base on the Air Force side. And without us, they would not be able to take off, not be able to do their missions and train. I'm at uh, 80 feet. 60, 40, 20. If they can't fuel them on the ground, they do it in the air with the KC-135 tankers. Getting to altitude, going into the back of the aircraft, opening up that window to the sky. And it's a view that not everybody's going to get to see. A very small population is going to get to see. So when I get to see it, it, it feels very special. Tankers are always going to be a part of modern warfare, and uh, today it's more important than ever, and uh, we're, we're very busy. This is Monty Bowen reporting. The Military Report is brought to you by Stanley Nissan. Innovation for all. When we first introduced you to Fairbanks resident Jenny Gray in February, she was on top of the world. Her son Gordon, a successful Hollywood movie producer, was a day away from releasing his latest movie, McFarland. Seven days after the movie hit theaters, both their worlds came crashing down as Gordon's oldest daughter, Charlotte, was diagnosed with a rare and fatal neurological disorder called late infantile batten disease. Shortly thereafter, they learned Gordon's youngest daughter, Gwyneth, also had the genetically inherited disorder. Little is known about the disease and there is no cure. Batten causes developmental regression, seizures, blindness and dementia. Gordon and his wife, Kristen, have started the Charlotte and Gwyneth Gray Foundation to help fund efforts to cure batten. They have raised over one and a half million dollars towards their $10 million goal. If you'd like to donate or learn more about Batten, visit cure slash batten slash dot dot org. Jenny Gray recalls the day she received the devastating news from her son. I got a phone call at eight o'clock in church and I, I had lost it. I was melting down. It was, it was just the way it was. So I went out in the hall and he says, Mom, it's fatal. Why well, hit the floor? And I said, God, don't let me have him hear me cry. And I had to suck it up. And that was, that was really an emotion I can't explain. All right, I was there earlier, and it's time now to check in with our friends again and find out exactly what's happening at Pioneer Park. All right, well, welcome back to another edition of What's Happening at Pioneer Park. We're here with Park Manager Jason Avery. How are you doing, Jason? Man, beautiful sunny day. So beautiful. So tell me, what do you guys got going on this week at the park? I see there's a lot of people here. Well, we've got a lot of people around the park, but what we're really getting ready for is the Golden Days bathtub races that are going to be happening, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, uh, here at 3.30 in Gold Rush Town. We've got cash prizes. We're looking for five men and women teams nice. and uh, build a bathtub get in touch with the bag ladies or our park office for all the details and uh, we're also going to have uh, that day Arthur from uh from Barnes and Nobles, oh, bringing Arthur from Arthur, uh, the PBS. From PBS Kids. PBS Kids. I He's going to be out here, uh, maybe at the bathtub races, walking around the park and doing a cupcake walk over at More Than Just Cupcakes. So what time do the, the races start at? Races are at 3.30. Arthur will be here at 2 o'clock. Okay, and how can people get signed up for these bathtub races if they want to do it? Absolutely. They can get in touch with us at the park office uh, on Facebook. Call us at the park office or uh, the bag ladies here in uh, Gold Rush Town. Well, you know, Jason, you know, you, you're doing a lot of talking about this bathtub races thing so I think you should show me what you're up to I think we should have a challenge here I challenge you let's, game on here we go let's, let's do, do, it. do it all right are you guys ready, ready. go 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 Got him. don't kill me gentlemen I know it's got to be rough. It's a rough life, but uh, I win. Congratulations. Woohoo! High five, team. Yeah. All right, team. All right, well, make sure you guys come on down and check out the bathtub races. I'm telling you, it's really cool because that's what's happening this week at Pioneer Park. Sorry, Jason. 
it is what Looked it like is. a barrel of fun. It, it was a barrel of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, Joe Cook is up next with footage from the opening day of the WIO 2015. All right, you'll also see some of today's winners, plus see how one gold panner is trying to impress colleges so he can land on a new team. Oh, yeah. that's very interesting. Those Let's stories and more after the break. Welcome back Interior Alaska, Joe Cook here with your local Wednesday sportscast. Today is the opening day of the 2015 World Eskimo Indian Olympic Games. KTVF Sports was there to capture some of this afternoon's action. WIO competitors got started a little after 11 a.m. at the Carlson Center for the 55th edition of the games with the kneel jump and toe kick. Both events simulate people navigating ice breakups. We start with the kneel jump event. In the women's division, Fairbanks' own Amber Vasca Karpluk continues her dominance in the event. Her second jump of 53 and three quarter inches was good enough to win her fourth straight kneel jump title. The first event of WIO 2015 was the toe kick. Athletes have to jump and tap the stick backwards with both feet and the stick and, and land their landings as well. Autumn Ridley out of Anchorage won this year's event. She nailed a jump of 56 inches to win it. On the men's side, Nick Hansen of Unila Cleet recently made an appearance on American Ninja Warrior won gold today with a jump of 7 feet 10 inches. This finish was a flashback to 2013 when both Ridley and Hansen won this same event. Well, I didn't even hit 60 and that's like below my PR. My PR is like 64 in a competition. I just wanted to hit 60. And I went up four inches each time just because I didn't want to waste too much energy. It's all right that it's this group because they're so elite and everybody was so elite, so it was a lot of fun. But having that com having that community and everybody helping out, like Forrest and Phil, everybody helping us out and each other, pushing each other, that's necessary because if we didn't have each other to push each other, then we wouldn't go our distances, you know? The Alaska Gold Panthers were rained out on Tuesday night. They have a doubleheader today against the Bucks. Speaking of rain, a storm has been brewing for one Gold Panther. In a sense, Alaska catcher and outfielder Brian Lees, a sophomore at the University of Akron, is no longer with the Zips. Why? Last Friday, the University of Akron shuttered the baseball program due to budget cuts. The school also cut over 200 jobs in an effort to save $40 million. Lee scored 12 runs and hit 292 in 55 games this past season for the Zips, who made it to the Mid-American Conference semifinals. Lee's out of Brunswick, Ohio, suddenly playing for his baseball career as each game is more or less an audition for a college team. So far, Lee's is hitting 273 for the Gold Panthers and is second on the team in hits with 27 and doubles with five. He also has seven RBIs. Recently, he's gained interest from Moorhead State, Georgia Southern, and the University of St. Louis. For now, he's just trying to make the most of each game, each at bat. I'm just trying to keep a clear head. Um, try to put that aside uh, when I get out on the field, just kind of clear my head um, and just play the game. It's been hard in the past few days. Obviously, he just dropped a bomb on us like that, but uh, at this point, just moving forward. Obviously, right now, it's a little more critical. Maybe a coach sees me play a good game, but uh, I've been trying to do that all summer, so nothing really has changed, just playing hard. At this point, I don't really have too many options. Uh, it's not like I, I was a senior in high school and could play all my cards, but um, just staying in contact with them and uh, finding what school is the best for me. Senior athletes from the interior are leading the way for Team Alaska at the National Senior Games in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 22 Alaskans are participating and 16 are from the interior. Alaska has earned 18 medals, which are the most ever for the 49th state in the Senior Games. Alaska has three gold, six silver, and nine bronze medals. Jane Langford of Fairbanks finished her games with a gold, silver, and bronze medal to go along with four fourth place finishes. Diane Darnall and Andrea Gelvin teamed up for doubles in table tennis and won the bronze medal on Sunday. The 2015 National Senior Games wraps up tomorrow, then August 7th as the Alaska International Senior Games starting right here in Fairbanks. Lastly, don't forget about a couple of upcoming events for this weekend. You can still sign up for the Angel Creek 50 Miler Ultra Marathon. The race starts this Saturday at the Compost Trailhead Mile 29.9 China Hot Springs Road at 4 a.m. There's also a 6 a.m. start. The race ends at the China Hot Springs Resort. Over 25 people are expected to participate. For more info, visit angelcreek50.org. This Sunday will be the Mush for Love Festival. The festival will feature food, beer, live music, and a few comedic acts. There will also be silent and live auctions. It's for ages 21 and up, and it's $30. All proceeds will go to mushers and dog teams affected by wildfires. Much for Love starts at 2 o'clock this Sunday at the Dog Mushers Hall on Farmers Loop Road. 
and that'll do it for sports tonight. Mike Schultz is up next with your full weather forecast and we'll catch you next time. Hello everyone, welcome back into a Wednesday night edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. Mike Schultz through once again talking about the weather. What a difference a day makes, right? 24 hours ago we were looking at rain falling all over the place, but today it was a gorgeous day. Beautiful, beautiful. Give me this clouds out there. And it looks like nice weather for tomorrow, too. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Hey, look at our uh, picture tonight. This one's sent in by Keegan McAfee. He was at the Aggie Creek uh, fire uh, position in there, there for where all the guys camp and get ready to fight the fire. And you can see the color of the sky was pretty amazing there. Beautiful pinks and purples. And the good news is that rain, I'm sure, helped out quite a bit. And again, photos at KTVF11.com. If you have one you want to share, by all means, send it to that address. 72 right now. S71 actually has dropped a degree. The high today is 72, the record high 93. That was set in 1993, a hot day that day. And the record low 40 in 1959. Your sunrise and sunset, just about 20 hours and 9 minutes of daylight. That's a loss of 7 minutes from yesterday. On the satellite radar, a lot of moisture moving over the southern half of the state. That's not going to move it any further than the Alaska Range because it's coming up in the wrong direction. Coming up in the south is going to give folks in rain, uh, folks in Anchorage, are quite a bit of rainfall. And the rain continues to fall over southeast Alaska. In fact, our latest map is showing once again that the rain is falling around Juneau. It's just showers around Ketchikan. Also showers around Kodiak, 53 degrees there. Mainly cloudy skies at Anchorage. Cold Bay, rainy conditions there, 53. And then up and down the west coast, anywhere from partly cloudy to cloudy skies from Bethel right on up to uh, Nome, it was 61 there. Barrel, 39 degrees and cloudy skies. And Fort Yukon, lots of sunshine and 66. Lower 48 weather, it looks like this. And again, we're talking about close to 80 degrees around the Seattle area. 100 degree temperatures for Las Vegas and Phoenix. Not quite as warm as it was yesterday in Denver. It was still 87 degrees, 90 in Salt Lake City. Dallas, 96 degrees. By Minneapolis, uh, partly cloudy skies at 81. Things have calmed down considerably from yesterday. As you can see, St. Louis at 87 degrees. New Orleans up to 95. Very hot and humid there. And 88 to uh, Washington, D.C. New York at 81. On the satellite and radar, Again, the high pressure continues to sit across Texas, helping to spin all that moisture across and helping to fire up those thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening hours and more of them exploding there. But out to the west, things look pretty darn good. Those makes look like dry conditions. Here's what the stormy pattern looks like for Thursday and Friday. More rounds of thunderstorms moving around the top part of that high pressure ridge while the heat will continue very strong across much of the southern half of the lower 48. And the jet stream is changing now. As you can see, it's taking a pretty good dip down to the south across much of the western half of the country, while the, uh, like I said, the west and eastern half continues under sweltering heat. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow. The northern sections looks like this. Mostly sunny skies at Barrow. Showers likely for Nome and Fort Yukon. Here in the interior, Looking pretty good. Sunshine with scattered clouds expected at Healy, Delta Junction, and Fairbanks, and maybe an outside chance of some smoke. That's in the forecast, too. Over southeast Alaska, cloudy skies in Juneau. Just a few showers for Ketchikan, so the rain moving out of that area. Over the southwest part of the state, just the opposite. Periods of rain at Cold Bay and Kodiak with showers for Bethel. So wet forecast there. And more rain expected around the Anchorage Bowl, likely at Anchorage. Heavy rain for Homer and just showers in the Valdez region. Here's your forecast for the remainder of the night. We're looking at uh, partly cloudy skies early, then more clouds by morning, 52 degrees, the overnight low. Tomorrow's forecast, 72, scattered clouds, but still some smoke is possible. And the five-day outlook, as you can see here, temperatures actually cooling down over the weekend now. Maybe a chance of showers on Friday, and then again a chance for early next week uh, on the uh, overall five-day outlook. As you can see, temperatures cooling down for the overnight lows. Uh, and then warming back up again to the mid-50s. So all in all, not a bad forecast, especially for the weekend coming up. Not bad, but it has been considerably cooler, I think. It's going to get a little cooler, too, because we're, we're not getting that strong, warm flow from the south anymore. So going to get back down to what we should be this time of year. Not bad, and definitely not bad for the fires. So Oh, yeah, yeah. that rain them. yesterday had to help because there was a lot of rain yes. all over the place yesterday. So that really had to help out a lot. Nice. Okay, thank you, guys. That will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Well, tonight on NBC Nightly News, Amazon slashed their prices today for Prime Day on the eve of their 20th birthday. Time for shopping. So Lester Holt will have more about that. <laughs> all right, join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. From all of us here at the News Center, have a great night. Good night.